Hello, and welcome to the Healthcare Executive Insights Podcast. My name is Elliot Sloan with the McCallum Group. And today we have a very special guest, Mr. Iggy Fonlo, who is the founder and CEO of Cloud Med Spas. Iggy, thank you so much for taking time to chat with us today. Elliot, I'm really excited. Thanks for uh, thanks for taking the time with me. And if you hear some snoring in the background, that's my black lab. <laughs> No worries. Not a problem. So tell us a little bit more about your professional background and what made you create Cloud Med Spas. Yeah, sure. So uh, I spent my first 15 years on Wall Street coming out of an engineering background from uh, Ivy League school. And uh, I really enjoyed it. There's a lot of uh, what now would be termed quant. It was very early on. I, I got supplanted by much smarter quants. Um, and I've been in technology for the last 20 plus years. Um, I've done C-level or founder roles. I think this is five or six. And this idea came to me when I had the insight about hair care. So I found this very, and this is getting a little technical, but a very strange uh, situation in customer acquisition and lifetime value. So in almost all businesses, certainly all the ones I've been part of, um, the business paid for the customer acquisition costs, i.e. the marketing, but they also reaped the reward. They reaped the long-term value, the lifetime value of the customer. But in hair care, it wasn't the case. Salons were paying for the marketing, but the lifetime value really traveled with the stylist. They reaped the lifetime value. So what you've seen in that $55, $60 billion industry is a transition it's still happening, but more than 20% of the entire industry is now chair or booth rental. And wow. it's the only logical outcome. So I saw the exact same marketing CAC LTV dynamic existing in medical aesthetics. And I wondered why it hadn't happened yet. But then I, led, I said, well, it's probably about critical mass. And now we've reached north of 10, maybe even north of 15 billion in the U.S. aesthetics market. Wow. You have enough practitioners, enough locations, tens of thousands of locations, I assume hundreds of thousands, maybe a quarter of a million practitioners. And now you have enough density that you can get practitioners into spaces and do the rental model. So that's what that's how I came up with uh, Cloud Med Spas. And we popped a couple of physical locations. We saw what was going on in the institutionalization of this trend. It, you know, I'll mention solo salon suites, my salon suites, Phoenix salon suites. Uh, Portrait Health did something that was related, but not exactly, but about solopreneurship. Sure. We did it. And then we even had a couple copycats. And I said, boy, there's nothing better. There's no uh, greater flattery than imitation. Sure. So at that point, we said, and this is just recently, we've got to just offer this as a management services organization, MSO to any med spa or group or aspiring group of uh, aesthetic entrepreneurs. I mean, that's sort of what we do. We empower aesthetic entrepreneurs. And what we basically say is you take care of the physical infrastructure, the space, the chairs, assemble or market to or just aggregate because you may have a community locally that we would never be able to replicate of local injectors, providers, practitioners. We'll do everything else. The software, the app, the administration, the inventory management systems, the branded branded app to you, um, prescription prices at the lowest possible rate as we pass on our savings, capital equipment, on a monthly basis, it's cancelable. It's not a long-term lease. Wow. And then finally, private equity value. I know this from my Wall Street days. I know this touching base with people in the industry now. Two of the biggest, if not the two biggest problems with uh, selling your practice, your med spa to private equity, and they're out there aggressively looking, is one, the accuracy of the revenue data. People get cash, checks, credit cards, barter, whatever it happens to be. And that's hard to track and really value properly. So, and the second is revenue diversification. You know, a, a four to six room spa, which is probably right in the sweet spot of the median spa, 
has 10 or 12 employee injectors. Well, what if you had, instead of 10 or 12 employees, you had 100 renters that came from a few hours a month to 30 or 40 hours a month? You would have a completely diversified revenue stream. And I've confirmed that. People saying, I, you can't really sell to private equity unless you have about 40 injectors. Wow. So what we can do is give the opportunity to almost any med spot to be able to get long-term equity value out of their practice. Wow. I think that's a huge unlock for them and for private equity. So we feel we've got a incredible solution. And sure enough, I've done a couple of these podcasts and we haven't marketed a dollar and we've had almost three dozen now, maybe 30, two and a half dozen um, groups reach out to us proactively. Wow. And they we're interested. And sure enough, we've got a few signed and another 10 or 15 in the likely to confirmed pipeline. And I'd like to think we can attract hundreds, if not thousands of these MSOs over the next several years. Wow. Very exciting and definitely an innovative approach to the aesthetic industry. So what it sounds like is you're giving the practice owners the tools to create a WeWork model within their office and a turnkey solution to put that in play along with operational support, GPO purchasing power, access to technologies that normally would cost six figures, but now you're taking all the risks off the table. That's essentially right. You bring the space and the people, we bring everything else. We work is a good mental model for it, but you know, we work without putting them in some wrong place, but you know, that's largely office space, coffee, maybe beer in the legal spots and and some nice conference rooms. Champagne for the ladies. There you go. Um, <laughs> but for us, as you know, in the medical aesthetics, because of regulatory insurance, medical directors, there's just so many moving pieces. And I think it's part of the reason we got in to eat our own dog food and did a, did a couple physical locations to truly understand and live and breathe and suffer some of those heartaches and say, hey, we we know what's the best way to solve, to get through this maze. I think we've got it. And, you know, we, we can offer it to anyone. And the bigger the network, it's one of those network effects. The bigger we get, the more everyone in the network benefits. Sure. That's the, the power of numbers, the strength in numbers, right? Yeah, exactly. Now, apologize if this is a silly question, but... Um, what I'm familiar with in the healthcare space is if you have a provider who is one of your most productive providers, then you make them sign a non-compete for that area that they're serving. Is that not something that happens in the aesthetic industry? It does happen from time to time. Increasingly, including in our home state of Massachusetts, non-competes have been made illegal. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, I don't know if that's true in every state. I don't want to speak to that. I'd be way out of my depth. I just know about here locally, but that is certainly the trend. That's true in California. It's true in New York. Uh, there's certain industries you can take garden leaves, uh, to, but that's generally around soliciting customers. And in our industry specifically, non-solicitation is a direct outreach um, and that, I think, in some cases, is not allowed. However, as we know, in social media, you're certainly allowed to post. You're allowed to post and say, these are my before and afters. These are my procedures. This is me having fun. And I am now at blah, 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 blah. That is not a direct outreach. That is a broadcast. And people will find you. In fact, they're probably following you. So sure. they will know where to go. Yeah, I guess I was also thinking in terms of if you're working with practice A and you yeah. decide you want to leave, um, at least in the orthopedic, spine, neuro, yeah. those specialties, it's very clear cut in their contract. You cannot go work for my competitor X if you leave our practice. Yeah, I, I guess I it's not like that in the aesthetic industry or else they'll never get the talented injectors to originally come join their team. Right. I, I I don't want to speak too much about the legal nuances of every state, every sure. position. Uh, 
but but generally speaking, they're first of all, they're limited in time. And I think they can't almost every state cannot stop you from earning a living. Sure. Sure. It's a gray area, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. Tell me more about the power of joining an MSO in the aesthetic industry versus operating independently. What are you seeing as the biggest points of failure for dermatology groups that are getting into aesthetics, plastic surgery groups that want to ramp up their cash paying aesthetic business? Where do most people trip and fall? Yeah, most people trip and fall, uh, I believe. I mean, I'm sort of, certainly speaking to my uh, offering, but we, you know, we created the solution because we saw the problems. And I saw the head nodding, as I mentioned to you earlier at Aesthetic Next uh, last week, when I said, you know, the number one problem or one of the top three problems seems to be HR. Uh, you know, there's there's this spa hopping concept, which I just learned uh, recently what the, the the term for it. But, um, you know, you could compare it to um, pro sports where free agents go back and forth to teams uh, to get a better deal. And so that's what the best providers who are great at what they do, sure. probably great at social media, great at developing relationships, as well as probably great injectors. Um, and then, honestly, on the flip side, too, is you're carrying the mediocre to subpar injector. Um, and there's and so the, the spa is taking that weight. But, you know, in a model like ours, they would they would eventually disappear. In fact, some people said to me, uh, you know, but so many there's bad injectors out there. How do you police that? I said, no, it polices itself because the bad injectors won't get customers. They won't get referrals. They'll they'll go away. You know, if they can hide in the current model, they can't hide in our model. Right. The second was marketing. So we've heard numbers as high as twenty, twenty five thousand dollars of marketing spent with mixed ROI, uh, as well as they're really feathering the nest of the provider. Those customers that come in, develop a relationship with the provider, and now the spa spent that money. Sure. And the other persons reap the benefits. And then you can't, the the, the numbers on the group purchasing, I, I hesitate to use that word. That's a nasty term. But the, the, the large scale buying. Sure. That's a big benefit. Uh, some of these practices have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on machines. Sure. And, it's not to say any of the one of the machines is good or bad or not. Uh, that's why I like the model of, of renting. In fact, coming from Silicon Valley, spending almost 20 years there, um, I love that software went from software install to SaaS. Yep. The beauty of SaaS is, A, it's kind of CapEx FinTech. Your capital expenditure for software has been financed by the usage model. Sure. But more importantly, it it mandates, it requires that the uh, software service provider have a great product. Because if yep. they don't, people will click, turn it off. Yep. Cloud, same thing with AWS or Google Cloud or Azure. They'll turn it off. Well, I say the same thing about machines. In fact, I've used this phrase. I said, capital equipment providers, you should move from machine to mass. Machines as a service. Yeah, yeah. Your capital equipment is as good as you say. And as efficacious as we think. Let me rent it. Bingo. If it is that good, you'll make more money and you'll have a higher valuation because it's recurring revenue. Everyone wins if what is advertised is true. Our motto is we empower aesthetic entrepreneurs. That's my passion. It's not aesthetics. You can probably tell by looking at my face. <laughs> my passion is helping entrepreneurs. I think it's a hard, hard road. And we get to do this at two levels. We get to empower the entrepreneur who is a med spa owner or group practice owner. And then by inference, we get to, to empower a dozen, 10, 20, 30 X more injectors because the math on them is super powerful. You know, in our area, a good injector or typical injector, 50, 60, 70 an hour. What we're finding and the math is easy. I'll walk through it. A good injector in our model has completely, has is making 150 to 300 an hour. Wow. How is that possible? Yeah. And the complete flexibility. It's not nine to five. It's pick your hours. 
Yeah. Let me go through the math. And I think you'll know this. Anyone who knows the industry will know this as I describe it. You take a block of, let's say, five out, uh, six hours at a cloud med spot. You can, I believe, and I've seen it, easily get 10 Botox treatments or, neuro, I should say, Zaman, Zaman treatments. Sure. Love those guys at MERS. Um, Zaman treatments in those six hours. Uh, well, you know, what you end up making in between the, the revenue might be 500 for a treatment and the cost of the product, 40% of that, call it. So you make 10 treatments, $500. That's 5,000 in gross revenue. That's collected by the practitioner. Yep. Venmo, Stripe, I mean, sorry, PayPal, Square, whatever they want to do. Yep. They probably pay about 2,000 for the Zaman or Neurotoxin. Yep. 3,000 net. And those six hours at our facility anyway would cost them about $450, $500. So 5,000 minus 2,000 minus 500, they've made 2,500 in six hours. That's how simple it is. Wow. So a great provider says, I'm going to work two days a week, two days a week, six hours, 12 hours a week. And we did the math. They're making 5,000 a week, 5,000 a week. Now you have to have a really long, big stable of customers, but that's your business. Your business is now injecting and customer management. CRM. But if you can do those well, sky's the limit. Now you're like, I'm going to Italy for July. God bless you. Sure. No overhead, no lights, no utilities, no internet, nothing to worry about. The really good people want this. They really want this. It empowers them. It takes their skills, their ambition, their hard work to a whole new level. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's going to happen, right? Like, it's still, it, especially like you said, with the uh, the big exodus from uh, corporate America and everyone wanting to figure out how to sustain their own lifestyle on their own terms. I think you're in the right place at the right time. On the MSO side, two now, maybe three, two of our original providers in our owned and operated MSOs are now starting their own. Wow. Yeah. It's a, it's just a massive empowerment of these providers. They're like, I did a great job. I want, I want to go, you know, 20 miles away or 15 miles away, and I have a bunch of uh, injector friends. I'm gonna set one up either with their own capital or with some investor or friend, and start their own MSO. We're like, great, yeah, a bless. Let's spread the spread the love. Now, I guess going through all these uh, different scenarios, the only thing I'm thinking is, okay, if this injector was normally a $5,000 a day revenue, uh, and now, you know, they're taking home, I think you said 40% once expenses have been paid, does the owner of the practice say, wait, there goes my margins? No, you're only telling. It's like saying if I if I lose Tom Brady, everybody's Tom Brady. Unfortunately, it, yeah. If there's a spa out there, the unicorn that has only the best twelve injectors on the planet, they don't like this. They don't like sure. this for sure. But all the others do. Sure. No. Sure. This is yeah. Like, and Which also, is ninety five percent of them. It's 99% of them. Uh, yes. And the truth is nobody has all the good injectors. They have some, and they're transitioning them and they're working on that and they're spending the marketing dollars that sure. go out before. And they have trouble unless they're huge to sell their company. It's just, there's, there's so few that it doesn't make better. And I've yeah. said this out loud, your total top line will probably go down because you don't get the gross revenue, but your bottom line, Yep. 95% sure it goes up and could go up big. Yeah. And, and you could sell it at eight or 10 times the annual bottom line in EBITDA. Sure. And you have one employee probably who's at the sure. front desk and you have no headaches, no yep. HR headaches. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a vitamin. It's a painkiller. Sure. Now, uh, tell me what your thoughts are on this industry becoming a bit of the wild, wild west, where there's people that are doing injections and getting into aesthetics that, quite frankly, shouldn't be 
offering these services. You know, that, that's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. Um, you know, we partner with the top top uh, in training injectors. We have some of our own training modules. Sure. Uh, we're not in favor of that at all. In fact, thank you for mentioning it. As part of our system, if you don't have a medical director as required by the state you're practicing in, if you don't have malpractice insurance that's up to date, and you and you don't accept our terms of service that require that you have all this training and for each of the individual devices, you have to do all of those. If you don't do all of those, so you're committing direct fraud on both, we don't even let you book. Sure. And you have extensive training, I imagine. Uh, we we have hosted it. We've now, you know, we created our own modules with our, uh, our uh, my partner, Mike Tantillo, created it with my other partner, Daniel Beck, uh, with our training uh, on neurotoxins. And now we have fillers. I believe we're doing a cadaver training. Mike is wow. doing it here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with our team at Lex, uh, team our teammates or partners at LexRx in Boston. Sure. Um, so we're we're very much about training. That's really critical. We want good providers. Actually, like I said before, we really believe our model. It doesn't. No, nothing is perfect, but our model should, because of the marketplace aspect weed out the worst ones sure certainly the bad ones because they'll get a bad reputation they might be at a spa and I, god bless that spa they're trying to do the best they can they get a really busy period sure they have some experienced great injectors and some maybe either not so great or inexperienced and they're like we have patients that are coming in we have to give them to somebody sure and that's i think where the problems occur and in this case the we've had little guys grow up to be or little gals grow up to be big, big providers just in the last year or two that we've been there, but they've done it through their own hard work and great, great practitioner. We're talking a lot about injectors, but there's also a lot of other services yeah. from chemical peels, um, skin treatments, and you know, you name it when it comes to aesthetics. Mm -hmm. How hard is it for a great injector to keep up with all the other great technologies and products and solutions that are out there as this aesthetic industry continues to grow with services. Yeah. Well, uh, I think first of all, it's hard to do. We offer micro needling. Uh, we offer true sculpt, cool sculpt, uh, Cyton devices. Sure. All, all the top, things. those are the, the best products in the industry. Yeah. So we offer them in our Boston location. We have the ability to propagate a lot of them, not all of them to, uh, to different MSOs. Um, but at the end of the day, that's where cloud med spas, that was the original concept. We've just, 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 like in the last couple of weeks, begun this community where people can join. They have to be uh, vetted, but they can join as uh, med spa owners, medical directors, or providers, or any of the above. Mm -hmm. They join the community. They can talk. Their contact information, if they want, is hidden, but somebody can reach out to them and say, hey, I know you're at least in the Denver area and you're a med spa owner. I want to talk to you. We let them connect through this med, cloudmedspa.com community and let them find out about each other. And I think those communities that form, whether they're virtual in our space or at any MSO location, or maybe there's two or three that are you know, within range, that that community talking to each other. I think some people have said to me, well, you'll lose that community of being in a med spa. And I'm like, actually, no, it's it's more like going from high school to college because you have a small group of 10 or 12 injectors. Now you can have a hundred renters and you could find your people, as I yeah. like to say. Find the people that you really, you know, you're simpatico with, that you really get along with within yeah. a broader community and share your insights, share your learnings, share the best products in the industry that you see are correct. And we also invite almost all our vendors, if they're so inclined to come in and do trainings, uh, teach-ins, whatever they want to do, webinars. Sure. Uh, we want people to be exposed to more. Wow. It makes sense. I, uh, I can see why you guys have been able to attract partners into your MSO without really doing much advertising on the platform. Um, 
you know, when you build something great, people will come to you. Uh, eventually, <laughs> but sure. no, I, I, what I'm, what I'm, like I said to you before, people are nodding heads and yeah, yeah. we're, we're, I mean, I don't know if I'm allowed, we're in the process of fundraising because it's, it's kind of overwhelming us, the growth. We, we did not expect, you know, probably this week I have me and uh, the, or the woman who runs uh, sales and business development for us, uh, Shannon Sieberin, um, she's fielding several calls a day now. It's it's crazy. It's going to get even crazier as we get more and more uh, exposure in the industry. And I, yeah. I think we can add a lot of value to all the players. It's a little bit, I believe, bringing a little bit of, into the light because there is a lot of um, obscurity with some of the uh, situations and prices and everything else. And sure. Um, and procedures and requirements. And we're all about let's let's open it up and let's open up the competition. I know, you know, um, I hate sports analogies as much as the next person, but I do love a level playing field. I really do. Uh, as an entrepreneur, you want that. Yeah. Um, and, and like, I, you know, I don't want to denigrate too much, but there's plenty of roles in the in society. If you don't want to compete if you want to quiet quit that's your choice i respect it but you can't expect the same outcome as those that are not sure yeah and i imagine your inquiries are not even coming through just for practices that need your help and are interested in joining the mso but the injectors are probably hearing about what type of money some of the injectors that are working at some of your locations are making i mean five thousand dollars in two days worth of work i might be going back to acetation school <laughs> i'm telling you uh, that might be the hardest thing is to keep our one or two site managers from switching their careers they see <laughs> themselves i mean sure. again you need to have a large roster of clients but you've done that you that's your asset base you know like a i don't know a broker a wealth manager a sure. insurance that's company. your book of business exactly it's your book of business you should profit. That's one of the things, spa hopping, you know, the percentage is different based on cost of living. I've seen 15% of gross margin or, you know, up to 25. In our model, the math is simple. You should make 40 to 40 to 50% of the gross margin. Wow. Which is unbeatable because it's just an open marketplace. Yeah. Then they'll be bringing every customer they could possibly get their hands on through your doors. Not even our doors. Right. <laughs> Someone else, which we're happy. The, the doors we're, that you're managing yes. and they're getting the amazing residual rental income. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's a, it's a real win-win. The And there is a massive first mover advantage for any local geography. Let me repeat that. There's a massive first mover advantage for any first mover. Now, I know that plays to our business, but let me walk you through it. And this is a common situation. There's 20 med spas in one, you know, square mile. Yeah. Yeah. Well, guess what? If you're the first cloud med spa there, you've now got 20 times 10, 200 prospective clients that are going to hear about you, see you, even if it's your brand, because we don't, they don't use our brand. You're the cloud med spa of Denver or of Salt Lake or of Chicago or Beverly Hills. You're the one people are going to go to and develop that relationship, develop that situation. And when the next one shows up, if it shows up, you know, five miles away or three miles or even a mile away, they'll be like, why am I going there? You're the same thing. Sure. So you will be able to be the, the the center of gravity that pulls all those great injectors that are considering sure. hopping to the best possible hop. Sure. It's like, you know, we work rental office spaces. There can only be so many in one market. Right. But in our case, it's hard to, they owned them all. So right. we're just powering them. Sure. So there's a, a really strong incentive. Sure. For someone to be, an early adopter as opposed to a late adopter. Makes a lot of sense. Very exciting model. And I know big things are ahead for you guys. I know uh, this is kind of a newer 
offering to the market. Is that correct? We're not aware of any MSO doing it. Like I said, we've got a couple copycats in our physical mm -hmm. location. There's institutionalization of this solopreneur trend in sure. the wellness industry. That's pretty well established now. Sure. With the large, I think something like a Phoenix salon suites may even have up, up to a thousand locations. I don't know, but sure. uh, it may have slowed a little bit because of COVID, but people are aware of this is, this is the way to go. And now it's just a little turn of the, of the clock. And you're like, Oh, wow. I want to do that. How could I do that? And it's a process to build it yourself. But if we just hand you the keys, you can drive the car right off the lot. It's a well-oiled machine ready to go. It is. We could spool someone up in under 48 hours. Wow. It's very exciting. Yeah. Thank you. Iggy, thank you so much for your time today. We've learned a lot about cloud med spas, and I'm sure our audience will um, really enjoy tuning in. And hopefully uh, some of the spa owners, dermatology groups, plastic surgery groups that are going into this space and feeling the pains will have a breath of fresh air when they learn about this model. It is definitely new, it's innovative, and it's exciting. Well, Elliot, thank you very much for your time. People can reach me. They can go to Cloud Med Spas, but they can reach me at Iggy at Vansanity. I'm sorry, that's the old name. V-A-N-S-A-N-I-T-Y dot com or info at Van Sanity, sales, Shannon. There's lots of us there. Wonderful. Iggy, we'll uh, follow up with you in a few months to see if you can come back on the show and we can get some updates to hear what's happening with Cloud Meds Boss. Thank you so much, Elliot. I greatly appreciate your time and this opportunity. Likewise, have a wonderful day and best of luck. All right. Yeah.